All right, uh, welcome everyone. This is a school building committee meeting for Thursday, February 23, 2023. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is approval of the February 9 meeting minutes. Is there a motion regarding those minutes? We have a motion from Madison to approve. Is there a second? Mary? Are there any corrections? Then all in favor of approving the minutes, please indicate. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, thank you. Can we, I'll see if I can get that off of here. Okay, um, then uh, next will be the uh, opportunity for public input. I know Tony would like to start off with a statement. Thank you, Andy. Um, at our last meeting, I made some comments which have uh, resulted in some public concern and I, I would like to make a few comments about them. I probably spoke uh, too harshly um, my intention was to point out um, to members of the committee that people on my side of the aisle very often fail to acknowledge or understand the legitimate concerns of people who disagree with us. Um, I have been accused of being divisive, um, but my purpose was to point out that there are in fact divisions within our community on social and cultural issues and that I anticipated all along that at some point in our discussion about whether bathrooms should be gender neutral or gendered, that we would hear some of this uh, disagreement. And um, it, was, it is my understanding that school administration has heard that disagreement. Um, I certainly didn't intend to, well, if I intended to insult anybody, it was people on my side of the aisle who failed to acknowledge that these opinions exist. Um, but I certainly did not intend in any way to be critical of, of people who disagreed with the idea of having gender neutral bathrooms because I, I certainly understand their position uh, and, and expected that at some point we would hear it. Um, so uh, I do apologize if people took my comments uh, personally. Um, I didn't intend them that way, certainly not in that direction. So um, I apologize. Okay, thank you, Tony. Um, are there other people from the community that would like to address? Um, we have Brian here um, in the chambers. We'll start with you. We have three minutes. Three. And we'll start with your, we know who you are, but start with your name and your address, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, there seems to be still some uh, confusion in the public um, about what direction um, the bathrooms are taking uh, at the elementary school. Uh, I think we need to get the word out uh, and Randy, clarify. I'm sorry, it. could you tell us who's speaking? Yeah, Bri Brian, could you give your name and your address, please? I'm sorry, I'm Thank Brian you. Coleman, uh, 26 Center Street, Mansfield Center. I'm Speaking as a citizen, but I'm also on the town council. Um, so getting back to what I was saying, um, somehow the word has to get out to the public because they haven't heard um, uh, Superintendent Dart's plan or changes for the bathroom. Um, maybe we can figure a way to get the word out. Uh, secondly, and surprisingly to me, uh, we have a PCO for a a sediment filter uh, for our domestic water. Uh, it was found that there was sediment in our water at the school on November 11th, 2022, an email was sent. Uh, we've run a lot of water in that school and we've already damaged some equipment by allowing that sediment to remain in there. The question I have is how much damage has that sediment done to the rest of the systems, the valves, you know, the uh, 
hot water systems, the heating systems, whatever, wherever the domestic water is used. Now, I have a very uh, grave concern when sediment begins to get into our drinking water. Where is it coming from? Is the uh, casing in the well set to the bedrock? Are we getting groundwater intrusion uh, into our well, uh, which would not be a good thing at all? And this was noticed back in November, and here we are. Just got a PCO for it today, and we've run so much water trying to get the copper out. I know we're running water daily to try to reduce the metals. So here we are. I believe we've had sediment for a long period of time in that school, and I would really like to know just how much damage that sediment has cost, uh, caused within our plumbing system, plumbing and the heating and, and whatnot. I hope you can look into it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brian. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to address the building committee? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we will continue on then with our agenda. Uh, that brings us to the updates from uh, contractor, architect, and the OPM. Um, maybe we'll start with the, the contractor. Um, I don't know if Al or um, Steve, if you want to talk a little bit about um, progress in the last couple of weeks, uh, I think with the gym, gym floor, uh, punch list, some things like that. Sure. Um, Al, you can jump in if, um, if I'm not answering all the questions or responding correctly. Um, Punch list wise, we're probably 60 to 65% complete. Um, I think we started with over 300 items. We're down to maybe just a hair over a hundred. So we keep, we're banging away at that um, as we progress through the building. Um, we had a meeting this week, site contractor. Spring is around the corner. And the site contractor will be remobilizing mid-March to complete work that wasn't completed um, based on the uh, planning and zone, the planning commission agreement that would include um, the correction and the, the, the shimming of the paving, um, finishing up the area that, that Newfield's trailer um, is in right now. Our trailer is going to be leaving probably in about two or three weeks. Um, we've established an office now to complete other work. The planter beds are being completed right now, and we want to move the we want to move the um, site contractor sooner rather than later so we can follow up with our landscaper. And as soon as the planting season allows pop in the miss the plants that were missing um, when 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 winter closed in on us. So we're progressing with the site work um, to where we think it's it'll be final completion before school opening. Um, hopefully the only thing that would be left is the rework of the um, permanent surface in the upper class uh, play area. So that's on the site end. On the gym flooring end, the our our insurance adjuster was there last Friday. The subcontract, the painting contractor's insurance adjuster was on the job Monday or Tuesday. Al, I, I can't remember. We expect a report from them on Monday or Tuesday of next week, which then allows us to start the repair work. Um, so that's about where we, we are with that. Um, we've got, um, the, the gym flooring contractor on standby to order the wood as once the adjuster has determined, um, should replace, there may be some negotiations back and forth on where we see the floor needs to be replaced versus what they may agree to but that's invisible to the town. Um, we just finished a two hour meeting um, on commissioning. 
Um, I think Chris was at that meeting. We were, I would say that we're probably between 80 and 85% complete with commissioning. We hit a big milestone today um, between the balancing, I mean, the uh, controls contractor and the engineer of design. There's some things that were noted in the design sequence of operation that really couldn't function the way the equipment is installed, you know, kind of like a generic, some of the items were generic in nature and the um, uh, Craig Riza, the um, mechanical engineer concurred with how, for the most part, how the controls contractor has set up the sequences. So that was a big milestone today because that was a question that we had last week. We gave the engineer an opportunity to review our questions and got a lot of it resolved. Um, we're down to maybe six VAV boxes that just seem to have too much turbulence and we can't seem to get the right balancing out of them. Um, the bigger issue I think that we had that came out of today's meeting are the cabinet unit heaters in the vestibules. They, we just were having a difficult time controlling them and it just seemed to be overheating the vestibules um, to a point where even if we lower the, the, uh, set, the low set point end, they're just blasting away. So we're trying to figure that out between engineering, the controls contractor and the trade contractor. So we're, we're pushing through the commissioning um, and pretty, pretty confident that we'll be complete um, prior to school. That's, that's kind of a brief on where we're at. Al, can, do you want to add anything? Uh, do you want to talk about the exploratory we're doing tomorrow in the gym? On the gym floor? Yeah. Yeah, I think what came up with our insurance adjuster in, <clears throat> really to understand the limits of where the water infiltration got underneath the floor. We're cutting holes in the gym tomorrow at limits that were suggested by the gym flooring uh, subcontractor. It's really not the issue of the surface wood, it's the sleeper system. And no matter what we do, we think there may be some moisture underneath the um, um, vapor barrier between the vapor barrier and the concrete. And we wanna be assured that we've been able to extract and evacuate all of that water. And that'll, that'll identify the extent of the gym floor replacement. And that's gonna to happen tomorrow. Anything else, Al? No, that's it. All right, we'll go Tony and then Steve. Um, we had such a hard time getting the appropriate maple for the floor to begin with, what's going to happen with replacement wood? What we have been told is that we should be in good shape to get the floor. And I keep reminding the flooring contractor, can't put whatever we replace, it can't be just grade one. It's now <laughs> gotta be that mix that we came up with. And but we've got a percentage of what we felt. We have seven. We, if you recall, let's say the gym was seven thousand square feet. We've got about seven hundred square feet of um, uh, grade one, the balance. So we, we, I told him he's got to order grade one at about ten to fifteen percent. The rest of it grade two, and then call out any others, any bad wood. So we don't feel that we'll have a problem getting the material once we get our this insurance pool settled um, to, to get that work scheduled. Once all this is done, if, um, Steve, sorry, can we get an extended warranty, maybe an additional year on the gym floor? We could propose that to the... Um, well, you can get a warranty probably for the floor to replace at the time they replaced it. Okay. I'm just I'm just thinking that the building, I think Newfield is a year warranty, right? For the building, is there a way to get an extension of that for the gym floor? I think we can get an extension based on the new completion date of the gym. 
Great, Steve. Al, could you repeat what you said, please? Well, the way we set up the substantial completion, uh, um, Jeff, with Adam, the gym's got its own substantial completion. Probably would have been right. done by now, but that water thing causes not to be done. So I think in turn, the gym is going to get a warranty when it's complete. That starts from that right. date. We agree to those terms. Right, because that's not, we haven't reached the substantial completion right. for the gym yet. Which we probably would have been there, but then we had this waterfall. Right. Okay, Steve. Yeah, Steve, with uh, respect to the holes you're going to be drilling tomorrow uh, for the exploratory, exploratory uh, moisture search, are these like small drill holes or these like cores? Like, no, uh, they're probably going to be, um, they're probably going to be about two foot by two foot. And, and we're doing them in a series that we can, if we have to get a vacuum or, or some vac snake down into that floor, but we're trying to find the outer, where the limits of the moisture um, is or may have stopped. We've got an idea, Karan's got an idea, and we just want to verify that. We don't want to go ahead and replace the floor to find out that another 10 feet of it needed to be replaced. We want to replace it all. It's an insurance claim, and they they we want to do the right thing. And if yeah, it know that. Calls, if it calls for replacing the entire floor, that's the direction we're going. Oh, I, I appreciate that. That we're we're definitely good with the uh, comprehensive approach. I think I'm just curious: should uh, with the start of school coming in April, should we plan on the gym not being available, or do you think we'll have this resolved by mid-April? Our intent is to have it resolved by mid-April, and that's. Great. That's where we're going right now, and we'll report if something changes. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, Ryan, Ryan has so just comment. two more or follow up on the gym floor. So, am I understanding you correctly, Steve? You're saying that the although you said two by two feet by two feet, that sounds a little bigger than oh, I was envisioning a hole, kind of like what Steve was you know, something a, a drill bit does. But anyway, no, so. No. It, it's a visual inspection, uh, yep. ultimately, to determine the, the, the outer limits of the water? Yes. And, and if there's any moisture trapped between the vapor barrier that sits on top of the concrete, if there's moisture, that's where it's going to be. Okay. And then the second thing was, uh, are we still thinking that this is sort of a two-phase solution? There's the uh, get, get the gym... Figure out where the moisture, the extent of the moisture, but do an interim solution that gets us through the school year uh, and pending availability of, you know, replacement material to then have a more permanent solution, perhaps. Uh, no. in, yeah, we've okay. been told that the material is available okay. um, from order. It's just on how much we order. And so when you say ready for the response to the last question, you're saying you're anticipating by the time the school receives kids that new material is in place yes okay thank you resealed and restriped all the other ancillary issues the you know the the drywall that we have to repair the ceilings we have to repair that that'll happen as a matter of course that's a, a week's worth of work and repaint it's really getting that floor a stat, uh, get an understanding of that floor hey, steve has another question yeah, one last follow up. So our best uh, guess on this is it was um, a contractor who perhaps hit the sprinkler head with a paintbrush. Is that still our working theory? No, that that is um, the adjuster that Al and and our field team met on. When did he come out, Al? Monday or Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday. Um, that was the painting contractor's insurance company. Okay, and so I guess my my concern is. If if it's a paintbrush that's able to knock off a sprinkler head, do we need to be worried about putting some sort of cage over these things? Because they're going to be in a gym, potentially with, you know, baseballs or dodgeballs or basketballs flying around. Do we have to worry about a kid throwing a ball and knocking another one of these sprinkler heads off and having no, the, the same? The, the, Steve, the sprinkler got hit down that back ramp corridor. He was up oh, on gotcha. the ladder. It was pretty close. You know, it's maybe an eight foot or a nine foot ceiling. I want to right. contract the kid that's going to hit a sprinkler head with a baseball in that gym. 
I want to be his agent. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the record, we don't play dodgeball anymore. Um, but uh, Steve, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Lauren uh, and my team are prepared to, to host Newfield. We would love to see that trailer uh, leave sooner than later. And so uh, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to make sure that your team is supported uh, in the interim. Um, I think can... uh, Ben has established, um, I think he's got, he's setting up somewhere in the principal's office, but I told him that he ought to move down into the big mechanical room. Where well, we were thinking ready. Ben would be a, a good principal just uh, on yeah. an interim basis. It was the first time he's been in the principal's office and not been in trouble. Uh, I don't believe that, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh. Other questions for Steve or Al? Chris Kiefer? I just wanted to say something relative to what Steve had said about the commissioning meeting. I've been to a few of them, and um, just for other committee members to know, it is really terrific to see this, um, this you know, different engineers and consultants um, working on fine tuning the building. And when people wonder why, um, you know, that, hey, the school's done, obviously look at it, um, why it's not quite ready. It's because of all these things that they're doing to make all the systems work um, in, in um, cooperation with each other. And it's complicated, but um, it's really, again, it's, it's very um, reassuring and um, amazing, frankly, to, to witness how they work together, how they, problem solve and um, and address the different issues. And they take everything quite seriously. Even things I bring up, they take them seriously. So um, it's, um, again, I think as a committee, we should feel lucky to have these guys uh, working on our behalf. Any other questions? All right, um, Jeff, do you have any updates for us? No, other than some, pulling together some PCOs and some last minute PRs and waiting for the punch list to get finished. The only concern I had was to make sure that gym floor down the road, there wasn't any issues. So it looks like we will have an extended warranty on that. So I think other than that, uh, did they, did you fix the chip, Al, that Brian Coleman had that I had told you guys at that main entrance? I want to comment on that. I looked for it. You can't even tell where it was. Even Good. Brian probably couldn't see. Good. It. Good. It's okay. So it has a remarkable job. Next time I'm there, I'll check it out. I was going to respond. Yeah. What chip? Yeah. There you go. It's across from the library at the yeah, second not blue anymore. Lamp it was, it was, okay. That was a joke, Jeff. I know. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying but, to be but Chris clear is for right. Brian. You look, you look, you can't. You really can't see it. All right. Um, all right, uh, uh, questions for Jeff? Rich? Uh, just a comment. Um, I went into my classroom yesterday and um, for the first time where I actually saw the furniture in and I was just blown away. It's beautiful. Um, I didn't want to leave. I sat in my room <laughs> until about 4.30 with the sleet and the snow coming down. I'm like, oh, maybe I should be heading out right about now. but. Um, I'm just telling you, Peter, now it's going to be hard to get uh, get me to retire. <laughs> it's a beautiful building. So just wanted to put that out there. Well, thank you. We're not accepting that. your retirement. <laughs> oh, can I, I must double back to Stephen out. When are the, the, um, the wall, the wall coloring, um, when's, when's that going up? I think it was it was shipped on the 19th, 17th or the 19th. I've got to double back with Ben on that. It was either shipped on the, I think it's shipped on the 17th. So we should be seeing it shortly. Yeah, I um, think uh, what Ben said, the full color will be the end of this week. And then the end of next week will be the trees. Right. Right. Okay. And we've got another contractor scheduled to hang that wall, that wall covering. Okay. Randy. Uh, oh yeah, Chris, go ahead. No one else. Um, I am still bothered by the um, yellow guardrail, whatever they're called, up on the roof. Um, and wondering, this is—I brought this up. I don't know, even a month ago. Um, and uh, 
There's one apparently around the the um, sky hatchway, and then there's another one around the uh, the uh, library media center things. But anyway, I think the building would look a lot better with them down or painted. Um, and I was assured that this could happen, and nothing's happened. Um, is there something we're waiting on before we can take those down, or what is the situation? I believe those are permanent. They were part of the change order. Okay, so we talked also about painting them. Um, and when you said, I believe those are per permanent, last I heard, they could be uh, laid down, but people had to put them up if they were doing work up there. But mats were required if they were going to be laid down because you don't want them on the membrane. But either way, I think we've got to find a better answer than leaving them up there, um, bright yellow. Yeah, I think I think if I can speak, Al, um, the ones around the five circular skylights in the library, I believe, can be uh, laid down next to the haunch there. The ones at the hatchways, I believe Al is correct, those have to stay. I don't believe you see those from the main entrance. I think it's the, the long, big yellow frame or uh, things that are surrounding the library skylights are the ones that Chris, I think, is primarily concerned with. Yeah, it is my, those are my primary concerns, but the other ones are visible from the road, the other one. The ones at the hatchways by code have to have to stay there. They have to be there for for uh, OSHA and to get up and down through that hole. Can we paint now them that, uh, on one side? Can we paint them? Uh, I don't believe so, but let me let me look into it. I want your building to look nicer, Jeff. Yeah, but we also have OSHA, OSHA and code stuff to deal with too. So anyway, we'll, we'll to be continued. I'll look into it. Thanks. Any other questions for um, contractor or Jeff? Okay, if not, then uh, Adam. Yeah, so the only thing I would uh, I would add is just a little bit of color on some of the other make ready work topics. So, for example, there was a, a lot of moving activities that have occurred recently. Um, there was a thousand boxes or something that came from uh, the, the trailer and the, the storage trailer and the Goodwin and Vinton um, materials that are actively being used for educational purposes. So I wanted to get those in the building um, and situated. So when teachers do visit classrooms, they can start some of that, um, some, some of the preparatory work with the materials on hand, um, as well as just some of these, these touch bases with, um, we'll, we'll call it end users. So whether it be uh, folks that have been involved all along, um, you know, Jamie and IT and getting his uh, systems up and running and, and fine tuning um, those systems and identifying any potential tweaks that might want to happen um, to some of the items that are uh, kind of more recently getting started up. So for example, I'm having a walkthrough with the, the kitchen director um, tomorrow just to walk through that space and, and look at some of those components. So a lot of these, um, uh, again, ongoing uh, last mile type activities beyond just the bulk of, you know, putting hammers to proverbial walls and building the building. Um, and with that, as uh, as you know, Jeff kind of alluded to, a lot of these we'll call them sort of clean up potential change or change orders and uh, and and items that come up as as you view the building in real time. Um, that's the type of thing that'll be coming forward to the uh, to the committee over the next several meetings as we as we wrap up construction. Any questions for Adam? Okay, um, then I guess we can move on to the, the PCOs. All right, so let me uh, share my screen here. So the first item, this is uh, just for reference only because it was approved by um, the expedited approval subcommittee. Um, this is for uh, some brake metal at the uh, clear story windows. So on the upper upper floors where there's windows up high in the vaulted ceilings, there was a, uh, an issue with one of the um, the configurations where uh, 
wood wasn't the wasn't the preferred solution, so it was getting swapped out to a brake metal solution. Um, so that's what this PCO was for um, that was approved. Uh, however, on the docket for approval tonight, um, as was mentioned earlier, is PCO 142R. This is for a sediment filter for the domestic water. Um, I can speak very briefly, and I don't know if Jeff or uh, Bill or Alan want to add on, but uh, effectively there was some sediment noticed in the uh, storage tank um, for the domestic water line. Um, I don't believe it was circulating throughout the systems, but it was noticed in the tank itself, just at the bottom. Um, and so the sediment filter was uh, suggested by the, um, by the designer of the system to help ensure that there weren't problems later down the road. Uh, it was uh, noticed a couple uh, months ago, there was coordination that needed to occur um, with the other testing that goes along with the water systems. Um, and so once uh, some of that had progressed in coordination with, uh, with the town um, facilities department, now was the, the time to move forward with installing the sediment filter now that some of the variables were known. Uh, Jeff or Bill, do you want to add on to that at all? I think you pretty much nailed it. Hey, Tony has a question. What is this sediment and where does it come from? Uh, I believe, and again, I don't know if Bill wants to speak more intelligently to this, but it's it's just sediment, naturally occurring sediment that comes up through the well, and um, it didn't appear to be something particularly abnormal. It was just a condition that was encountered and noticed at the bottom of the tank. So the prescribed solution was to provide the uh, the filter for said sediment. And there were no, I mean, you're pumping water out of the ground. I would assume that every once in a while you'd get sand in it, um, but there weren't filters planned originally? Correct, not, not, uh, not this type of filter, no. So it's the, my very rough characterization from the, like some of the correspondence with the design team was that um, not, it always, doesn't always occur in such, a, such an amount that you would need a filter. You know, why put in a filter to filter something out if it doesn't occur and it's not necessary. Um, but when it does, this is the type of filter you provide. Is there any likelihood that this is just an initial issue and it will disappear within months? Uh, I don't have a, the, the background to, to speak to that. Um, the suggestion that we would install a filter system rather than a wait and see suggests that it's a um, it's the prudent long term solution to ensure that there aren't problems. And right now, it's a you know, layer of sediment on the bottom of the tank as opposed to you know, it goes on for a number of years and then uh, that just builds up and up and you have to muck out the tank and, and rechlorinate the system and um, have it be an ongoing greater maintenance issue than a simple filter swap every now and then. And why is a filter system so expensive? Yeah. That I couldn't tell you. That's uh, the design team did look at it, uh, both uh, Coloronan and the uh, the well designer, and um, they, they confirmed that there was the right scope and that was a, a, a reasonably appropriate value for what that type of filter costs. And this does include chlorination. Yes. Chlorination. Yeah. Yes. And the water was not going to be chlorinated originally. It was, but when I think when you go in there and do something with the system, I think you're required. Correct. To rechlorinate it. Just in case something were to contaminate it while you were changing out the components. Yes. So yeah. it's re rechlorinating the water that's currently in the tank. It doesn't. It's not. Inst you're not in putting in a new chlorination system. No. 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 Okay, thank you. Yeah, it looks to me like that they specified a five micron filter cartridge based on the manufacturer's recommendations. That's from Jim Erickson, Jim Erickson from Leonard. So it looks like it went back and forth between all the engineers to make sure we got the right system in place here. Okay, other comments, questions? Chris? Yeah, I just like to, can you go back to the point of the diagram of this? And it just, it does seem like a crazy amount of money for it. And I'm, I'm intrigued that it has to be inside the tank and therefore require um, <clears throat> the whole, I guess the whole tank has to be emptied or maybe not, um, but at least it has to be chlorinated to 
refresh it back to zero. But what's going on in this uh, diagram? And, and well, two questions. One is, are there other alternatives that aren't so amazingly expensive? And secondly, um, why is it in the in the apparently in the tank and not in the whether it's the pump room, which has a lot of space, and um, or in the mechanical room where the water comes in? I couldn't speak to the design. Again, this came from a very specific well and, and plumbing designer. So I can't tell you why uh, this type of filter was specified. I don't believe there are uh, you know, drastically cheaper alternatives to overall filter system. Um, that, and that question could be asked, but this, this was the recommendation from the, from the well designer. Yeah, Adam, and on page four, there's a summary sheet it talks about the cartridges, the filters, the housing. You know, there's a number of items here that looks like they hand labor as well. There's some big ticket items there, ball valves, filter cartridges, sediment filter housing. And this this filter is is in the pump house, not in the tank. Okay, thank you. But you still have to chlorinate, huh? If you disrupt the water that flows to the system um, and expose it to atmosphere, you must treat the system as ex you know loss of pressure. The state requires that you are to chlorinate the system to ensure that there is no bacteria that was introduced into the system. If it was on there, I missed it. What's the cost for chlorination? 1200. 1200. Okay. And does the, the tank is therefore then not have to be empty? Right. The tank would not be emptied. It's, it's literally once they put this filter in, they will need to chlorinate the system. There won't be any emptying of the tank. Do you have a sense of the depth of this sediment? I mean, is it a, is it a 16th of an inch, a, a millimeter? Is it how, how, thick is it on the bottom if it was uniformly distributed? All I can tell you is, is they told me that there was a film on the tank when they replaced one of the pumps. Um, it, was, it was like a, it was like a micrometer. I mean, it was, right. and it was pretty, before we went, the tank got filled. We had guys down in there and cleaned up, oh, I would say most of it. But, you know, since it was brought up and the concern of the engineer, well, maybe we should put a filter system in. And that's how it all started. Although I saw on that diagram that a couple of valves were damaged because of sediment. Was that this sediment or was it another one? That, <clears throat> that was the, that was probably the initial energizing of it and whatever silt or sediment came through the system may have damaged those ball valves. And they were pre-tank those valves. They the water first goes into the, the well room and then it goes out to the tank. Right. Steve. I'll make a motion to approve the PCO. All right. So Steve's made a motion to approve PCO 142 R. I'll second. Of Okay, Sorry. for the amount of $12,958 for a sediment filter for domestic modern, we have a second from Rich. Any other comments or questions? Then all in favor of approving this PCO, please indicate. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. That brings us then to the invoices. And uh, so this monthly invoice uh, packet is for just over 1.6 million um, typical invoices from uh, our commissioning agent, uh, Collier's, um, as well as our uh, movers for storage and our stormwater uh, management um, consultants. Uh, you'll notice a number of items on here for furniture. Um, that's obviously been the big activity in uh, January, uh, towards the end of January and through the beginning part of uh, February for some of the cleanup items. 
Um, right now, uh, TSKP is, is coordinating on some of the items that, uh, you know, the desk comes in and it has a damaged top and you have to reject the top or, you know, there was a chair missing, those kind of things. Um, so the lion's share of um, the, the work and the money has been uh, completed. It's just coordinating those last punch list items. So uh, hence the large number of invoices related to furniture on this uh, invoice packet. Um, as well as Newfield's uh, standard invoice and um, an additional invoice for release of some of the retainage, uh, retainage being the money that's held back out of every invoice. So if you uh, Newfield bills for $100, you hold back $5 from it, 5% uh, towards the end of the job. So now we're at the end of the job, there's the release over that retainage to reflect the work having been completed. Any other questions? Tony? Is that all of the retainage or a portion of it? That is a portion of it. So in the same way that the regular invoice gets reviewed for work complete, uh, the release of retainage is also reviewed between uh, Newfield, TSKP, and, and Collier. Thank you. That's okay. Hey, Ryan? M maybe just to uh, pick up where Tony left off, uh, for the for the good of the group, could you just uh, provide us an estimate of what retainage remains? If this was approved. Uh, yes, I can show you. Uh, please forgive the scrolling. There's a lot of pages on this particular pay application. Uh, so the balance to finish of the work plus the retainage would be just 2.1. Uh, 1.4 million uh, would, is still in retainage at this point. So obviously that would get drawn down next month as well. Okay. And then is there a motion regarding invoices and pay applications? Oh, Mary. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be shirking just because I'm not, you know, at the table today. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the invoice packet with today's date, February 23rd, 2023, including invoices from CES, Collier's Project Leaders, Hilliard, Interscape, IMTL, Insulaco, R&B, Red Thread, Robert H. Lord, WB Mason, WB Meyer, and Weston and, Weston and Samson in the amount of $1,000,000. $17,103.18. Newfield's application for payment number 21 in the amount of $138,319.38. And Newfield's application for payment number 22 in the amount of $463,565.24 for a total approval of $1,618,000. $987.80. Okay, thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Steve seconds that. Any other questions? And all in favor of approving the uh, invoice and pay, invoices and pay apps, please in indicate. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. That brings us uh, to adjournment. And I'll move the adjournment. We have a motion from Chris to adjourn. Is there a second? Mary, thank you. Then all in favor, please indicate and you can sign off. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.